the first session. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so, which we are going to talk about vocabulary today and uh, what to do with the words. And um, a few things about me. Here is also me. My name is Marina and um, something you can say. I'm a SOTA trainer and I have some experience in teaching. So, yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm talking to you and to just presenting. Um, one more thing here is that I'm originally from Ukraine, from Kiev. Unfortunately, I know that somebody might disagree, but I'm unfortunately I'm currently living in Italy. Uh, in the chat box, can you please share where you are? So, are you in Ukraine? Are you somewhere abroad? Please, because I need to, you know, it has to be some kind of a dialogue. I want to, I want you to participate somehow. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. oh, some, some people are somewhere here near me. We might meet. Where are you? In what city? Ah, I'm in Brescia. It's Brescia. In the south. No, I'm uh, in there. Yeah, north. Okay. The same. Hi. The north of Italy. Okay. Thank you very much. So I see that some of us are in Ukraine or in Kharkiv. I cannot imagine staying in Kharkiv now. Just feel very brave. Okay, so let's let's move. So in Italy, you know, I think here in Italy, uh, I um, had to learn some words, right? And the first word I learned is uh, mangiare which actually means to eat. And the reason why I learned this word is that uh, in the family we lived, that was the main topic to discuss, you know, food, have you eaten? Uh, what would you like to eat? Are you ready to eat now? Are you ready to just yeah, everything about that? And uh, so I repeated this word all the time. And the second word is, uh, Trufa. Actually, when I moved to uh, a new city, I had to pay for some bills. And what happened was that I was, Trufa is cheating. So actually, I was cheated. I had some uh, problems with bank account and I had to talk to a police officer. So actually, this one, this uh, word, I haven't repeated it a lot of times, but, you know, I first um, rehearsed what I have to say to a police officer. Uh, and um, that was, you know, strong emotion, uh, strong negative emotion in this case, right? Uh, and um, I don't know why, but I still remember that. It happened to me two months ago, but it's still there in my mind. So, as you see, repetition and some emotions. Okay, so then let's see what happens in our memory. So, first of all, we need some stimuli. We see something, we hear something, we touch something. And that helps us to move information, no matter which, to our short-term memory. Then we have to repeat something a lot of times. And only after that, it goes to long-term memory. And when it's in long-term memory, we have to take it some, somehow from that. So what do we need in course? We need to create a memory. We need to consolidate the memory. So we need to move it to a long-term memory, right, somehow. And we need to recall, so we need to come back to our long-term memory and uh, take the word from that again and again. And uh, one 
thing about long-term memory is that we cannot throw a lot of information there at the same time. Because if we throw a lot of things there, uh, it doesn't stick. So here is a nice picture that demonstrates how it works, right? Okay, so in purple, let's have a look at this picture. And uh, uh, please look at the picture. And the question is, what do you think it is made of? Any ideas in the chat box? What material do you think it is? Mm -hmm. Can you hear? Agree? Marble, probably, probably stone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, just I see that lots of you say it's marble. Well, let's have a look at where the picture was taken from. So you see, it's actually laminate. So it's not marble, it's not stone. What is the word that might describe this feeling? So we had the feeling that it is marble. Can you think of the word that describes that? Okay, fake, but um, I mean, um, does it look like marble, right? So what do we say when we just describe this looking like marble? Uh -huh, okay, probably, probably, thank you, okay. And there is a nice word, very similitude. A very similitude. So again, my question is, does it look like a marble? Like marble? Yes, it looks like marble, right? Is it a real marble? Oh, no, it's not real marble. But when we, those who made this uh, laminate, did they want us to believe it's marble? Actually, yes, they wanted to believe. So the word for that is verisimilitude. And this is actually quality. So if it's quality, it's uh, which part of speech? It's noun, yeah? Now, can you, again, verisimilitude. Can you, in your brain, in your mind, try to say the word to yourself, yeah? Verisimilitude. Now, can you, in your mind, try to kind of imagine that you're right, oh, no, you cannot imagine that you're writing that, so can you, in your mind, try to pronounce the words, yeah? Very similitude. Yeah? Hello, hello. Okay, can you just, again, try to yourself, to say the word to yourself, yeah? And very similitude. And if you're talking about the way it looks like, here is it. And to me, and I believe you might agree with me, the word looks like very plus, plus similar. So very similar, very similitude. So now, in your mind, can you imagine writing this word? Yeah. How are you going to write that? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, fantastic. And now, if we are talking about the use, right? Um, the designers they wanted to achieve very similitude. Sometimes when we look at this laminate, we understand that they wanted, but the designers wanted to make it look as marble, but they failed to the something lack very similitude. Yes. And we when we want to improve the situation, we add the similitude. Okay. Let me so in general, what I tried us to do, I tried us to make you remember the words. We will see how it works later. 
So what makes us remember actually? Uh, when we involve senses, when we can hear the words, when we can say the words, probably somehow connected to feeling, touching, doing something. Uh, we need strong emotions. Actually, those positive and negative emotions, strong emotions, they make us remember something. I remember that one was truthful. Uh, I, I can't say I was very happy about that. But positive emotions make us remember much better. Uh, we need to make associations. Uh, in this case, um, also we connect one knowledge, one piece of knowledge to something that was um, that we have in our mind. Right? Very similar statement here, right? We need to connect to something that we already know. With this very similitude, we know the word very, we know the word similar. But we know that some nouns are formed with this ending tude, like attitude, amplitude. And uh, based on that, we might remember the word verisimilitude better. We need to repeat the word through different activities. And uh, uh, when it is connected to our personal life, we definitely can remember the word better. So for me, manjara, trufa, the words I needed, and they were very connected to my life. That's why I remember them. First, we need to involve some senses. How can we involve senses? You, it's important that students pronounce the word out loud. Only then they just um, can connect the word actually with the with, with something they, that they already know right they need to pronounce it uh, definitely we need to make students uh, write the word down uh, because we uh, involve these motor skills you remember i told you to imagine the word with eyes closed you can write up to students to imagine writing the words with eyes closed. Right. Well, movement. I believe you know about total physical response, CPR. What I mean is that actually you somehow move this movement to demonstrate the words you are teaching. Uh, with some actions, it is easy. And with some uh, nouns, real. I mean, I'm not abstract, right? Nouns, you can also try to show them, for example, house or a roof or something like that. Uh, as for um, abstract nouns, it's more difficult, right, to imagine how to show them. But uh, you can create. Yes, your movements, and then your students know that if you show some uh, gesture, it means this or that particular word. Well, if we are talking about repetition, right? How can we make students repeat? Uh, really, in something that we uh, teachers typically uh, avoid uh, and Sometimes, you know, we might feel stupid, right? When we are pronouncing the word, we're asking students to repeat. Uh, students do not understand why they need to repeat. And the teacher actually doesn't understand why she wants or he wants students to say something. And um, in that case, drilling doesn't make sense. Uh, actually, again, drilling is for students to articulate, to involve uh, the, what's that, uh, motor, not motor, right, but also some uh, muscles, right, and there will be muscle memory involved there. When drilling, uh, make sure that you specify, right, you, um, sorry, 
somebody is talking, you um, specify what you want your students to repeat. You highlight some problematic areas, and when students repeat, you listen to them and you correct them if necessary. It's not only pronouncing, but pronouncing it correctly in the right way. So how can we make it uh, varied so that not only I said, you repeat? Okay, first of all, the whole class, you said, students repeat it after you. Uh, whole class repetition is to, to say, um, safe environment where students can try to say the word for the first time and if they make a mistake if, if they mispronounce it's not that clearly visible because everybody said right and um but the only issue is that whole class drilling is uh, something that is very difficult to perform in online class the reason is that we all have different internet connection. Some people, some students will hear you um, earlier than others. The same day when they say you will hear some of them earlier than others. Um, that's why with um, online drilling, Probably you might ask them to say something when they mute it, right? What else? But with offline class, it's much easier. Half the class, you ask to repeat this half of the class to say the word and this half of the class. Yeah, somebody mentioned that. Only boys say that, only girls say that. And it's competition. Uh, individual repetition, individual drilling, in that case, you will hear each student separately. And again, remember that we correct uh, them, but we do not overcorrect. Do not humiliate one student in front of the whole class. If they cannot pronounce the word, whatever, no matter what you do, they cannot pronounce the word correctly. Let it be. Let them live with that, probably in some interest. In a lesson or two, they will get that. Uh, whisper drilling. So, yeah, to ask your students to whisper that. Shouting. Kids, younger kids like that a lot. Right? But again, make sure that the when you work in a state school make sure that teachers in uh next door classes are ready for that and agree that you might shop something um say something say the word repeat the word as if you are very happy very sad very bored very excited and so forth okay uh now if I'm talking about vocabulary, right? and if you look at the uh, books, actually they sometimes lack uh, tasks uh, for um, vocabulary practice. And you, you need to they simply throw the words at you and that's it. So you need to create some activities to do some activities with them. Well, there are some words, there are some activities, games that might work with is a lot of different words, no matter which set of words you teach. Imagine that we have vegetables, food, uh, and the game you can play is guessing game. For example, right now, I'm thinking about one of the items here. Yes, you don't Mr. know which one it is. Can you please mute? Okay. So uh, you don't know which one I'm thinking about. So try to guess. And students will ask you, is it a tomato? No, it isn't. Is it a carrot? No, it isn't. Is it a cucumber? Yes, it is. Then one of your students 
things about one of the um, items here. And then students may uh, work in pairs. Um, the way it is done, as I've just told you, can be done only if your students are uh, not cheating. What I mean? For example, I've seen, I'm thinking about uh, a tomato, and the first student straight away says, is it a tomato? But I want to continue playing. I want to be in the center. So, no, it is not a tomato, right? How can we avoid that? Uh, if it is an offline class and um, students are given these words in cards, right? So a student takes a card, kind of hides, right? So nobody can see what is hidden there, right? But in this case, everybody has to answer uh, honestly. Right? The next activity is what's missing. You take the same set of cards. Then you ask your students to close their eyes, to close their eyes. And please, you can show them that they close their eyes. Make sure that they use their palms to close their eyes, and then you take one card away. Um, in and when students open their eyes, they need to guess or just to remember what you have hidden. And in an online class, it can be done like that. Yeah, okay. yeah, you use some kind of um squares or some pictures, other pictures, and you simply hide one picture behind these squares and so on and so forth. Um, okay. Um, again, similar to who am I? So actually, draft again some cards with some words, and um, student takes a card and keeps it is here on the forehead and cannot see what's there. Yes. So actually, he is or she is asking, is it a tomato or is it a cucumber? Is it something like that? So similar to um, guessing game, right? But the rules changed a bit here. Again, can be played uh, in pairs later on so to, to, to make them more involved, yes, and to make sure that everybody is speaking, everybody is talking and using the language. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of different applications. Now, a lot of these games now can be played online. Uh, the issues is that, that Sometimes it's very difficult, you know, to upgrade all applications, to know about all of them. Some of them need um, to, uh, just, uh, um, to log in, right, or to create their own, your own account. And it's, sometimes it's, you know, over, overwhelms too much, right? Okay. Pelmanism uh, or memory game. So in this case, so you in online in offline class you put cards again depends on what you want students to do there might be cards a uh, picture and a word right and uh, students need to find a pair it's important that every time a student takes a card he pronounces the word not simply looking at okay no it's not no it's not Looking at pronouncing. Well, so picture and word. If these are collocations or I don't know, prepositional phrases, yes, verb and preposition, but yeah, depends if different words need different prepositions. Uh, some chunks, two, two parts of a chunk. Right? So anything you can think about. It can work with kids and it can work with uh, high levels, right? As I just told you, or it can be again. Yeah, but word and definition takes too much. I wouldn't do that with definition. But pictures, 
if you are um, fond of translation, right? You it can be a written translation. But those who know what communicative approach is, remember that uh, translation is not always well. Okay. And if you are talking about memory games uh, online, you can find different resources, but one of them is just well known. I, a lot of us already know what Word Wall is. So there, there is one of types of tasks is this feminism or memory game. Uh, also, one of uh, tasks is find someone who, and this task makes your um, vocabulary repetition more communicative. So you are talking about, you know, students are talking to each other, and they are uh, using uh, vocabulary, and they are give, uh, given answers about themselves so they are using this vocabulary to talk about themselves okay. for example find someone who likes and you give a list if you're talking about again vegetables you give the list of different vegetables so actually what do your students need to do they mingle in the classroom and they Ask the list of questions. Do you like tomatoes? Tick. Do you like some cucumbers? Cross. Do you like potatoes? And so forth. Uh, in online classroom, uh, if you use Zoom, and if your group is not very big, uh, you can use uh, in breakout rooms, and there is an option where students, participants, can choose themselves can can move from one room to another themselves in that case uh definitely you need to practice it once and um the second thing is that um students uh, there has to be a rule right that uh no nobody leaves room empty so if one student is in the room he or she doesn't go to a different room. She's waiting while uh, some participants, some students will join this room. Okay. What else? This one I particularly like, uh, but unfortunately I haven't still um, decided how to adapt it to online teaching. Uh, in offline, uh, each student gets a piece of paper with a word, or with a picture, or with a phrase, or with a sentence. It depends on what you want them to uh, to learn. Again, let's imagine that it's um, something. Um, let it be a knife. A knife, right? I have a picture of a knife. And we mingle and they say, uh, we are working with a partner, I say, this is something you use to cut food. And your student says, it's a knife. Okay. And your partner also says, describes the word on their card. Let it be scissors. This is something you use to cut uh, paper. I say scissors. Good, and we exchange our cards. So now I take the card with scissors, my partner takes the card with the knife, and we go and work with a different partner. And uh, this case, right, we continue exchanging and we continue working with different words. Um, with little kids, uh, definitely different songs, rhymes, and chants work. Uh, with adults, you can look at a set of books called Just Chants. Uh, I would say it's not about separate words, it's about some functional exponents uh, where you repeat uh, the same phrase uh, with the music. 
just music. Uh, snowball, I say the word. My partner repeats my word and adds one more. Third student uh, repeats two previous and adds one more. Uh, it's good to play when you have uh, small groups because with big groups, uh, everybody will have to wait for long until it's their turn to say. Tennis whisper or broken telephone. I believe you know this game from probably childhood, or if not, just um, a lot of students. You can play in two teams, for example, in three teams. Um, one student, just they are in a line. The last student says, whisper the word to the one who's the, who stands in front of him. Uh, uh, again, uh, the, the second one, the penultimate, says to the one who stands between, uh, in front of him and so on and so forth. And the last student who is standing next to the whiteboard writes uh, the word on the whiteboard, so the one that he or she heard. It can be competition, so if you work in three teams, they need to do, to do it faster. Definitely, oh, I cannot imagine uh, playing the game in uh, online classrooms, but for offline, it's possible. Yes, snowball possible in offline, in online classroom. Yes, songs rhymes as well. So there is some choice. Well, um, do you remember the word? Step, yeah. If you remember, simply drop a plus. You don't need to write a word. You have something to very similar and to the ending to right? Who remembers? Okay, good. So the word is very similitude. Yeah? Very similitude. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, fine. Uh, one of the activities that can be used with long chunks. Uh, not kind of very communicative, but helps you repeat one and the same, or helps students repeat chunks of the text uh, just, um, several times. Uh, here are some sentences with some chunks. Can you look at it? And uh, in the brackets, uh, there is a combination of first letters of the chunk. Okay. For example, dress up in very ornate costume is D U I V O C. Dress up in very ornate costume. Costume. Okay. Uh, actually, so you can look through that. And uh, each following sentence, in each following sentence, we add uh, more chunks. Right. Okay, so how is it work? How, how does it work? Uh, in the um, offline class, you give the set of cards. Right? Number one is on top, face down, right? Number 10 is on the bottom of the pile. The students in pairs, they take the first uh, sentence, right? They look at that uh, and uh, try to remember the chunk. Put it aside, take the second one and try to reconstruct what these stands for. Right, and then adds another one. Uh, then put it aside, take this third one, also try to reconstruct uh, what the previous phrases mean, and add one more. Right. Actually, if they do not remember any of this uh, chance, that they come back to the previous sentence check themselves. And this is that at the end we have all the phrases of the chunks we wanted our students to remember. 
Yeah, there. Uh, in online class, you can do it. Open class, right? So you give one sentence, students say, repeat, whatever, then you give the second one, so on and so forth. And when it comes, yeah, and then it comes to the last sentence, and you can ask students individually to, 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 to speak, to say one by one, right? Okay. Um, one more thing you can do is uh, taking if this or something, um, some objects, real objects, not abstract, uh, concrete objects, uh, you can take some pictures uh, when where the all the objects are just shown, or if it's not possible, if you cannot find a good one picture. You can make a collage, so you're taking different photos of different objects you need. You give the learners some time to remember what they can see here. Uh, they look at it, they try to memorize, then you hide the picture and you start asking questions. For example, uh, uh, where is the washing machine? Is it on the first floor or on the last floor? Right? Uh, is there a mirror in the bathroom? Or any other questions you would like to ask? Um, it, this activity can be done again. Open class if you want to teach you students how to do that. Later on, you can um, give the students this activity to uh, work in pairs. First, there will be one picture for one student to remember. Then there will be another picture for another student to remember and uh, test each other. Well, uh, if you're talking about personalizing, right, uh, very briefly, um, you might ask students to divide um, some vocabulary, yes, uh, to place it in the Pie chart. In this case, it's about uh, free time activities. Uh, it can be about, if you're talking about food, they can put it in the pie chart uh, and divide how much they like something or how often they eat something. Or it can be uh, school subjects, again, like more or less um, personal adjective, personality adjectives, some they have and some they do not have here, yes, some they have a lot of um, one quality but little bit different quality. Or clothes they like wearing, they have, they have 10 jeans but two skirts and only one you know, dress. Uh, to put um, no words on the scale, Something that you like very much, or you don't like, just how much you like something. Or uh, again, if you're talking about um, some uh, some something in the house for your comfort, comfortable living, something that you need very much and you don't need at all. Um, dividing um, some words into just categorizing something the best and the worst for example the worst food for me the worst food for me the best type of transport for me the worst type of transport for me um the best um, whatever clothes for me the worst clothes for me what the food diet or food yes sports the best sports for me the worst sports for me and so so first and then they talk to the partner and simply compare if they have same or different um, preferences. Pyramid discussion, uh, like um, agree on 10 best qualities for a teacher. So first they agree in pairs, they then agree in bigger groups and in bigger groups. Uh, agree on the places uh, to visit, agree on buildings and places in your ideal city, Agree on items to take with you when um, traveling abroad. 
uh, agree on uh, whatever. Yes, you can think of anything you, you your imagination lets you think of. Okay, who remembers the word? Please drop a plus if you remember it. Okay, great. Oh, great. So the word is very similitudes, right? So something that looks similar, but actually is not that. Okay, fine. Thank you. Now, so that is what you can do during the first lesson when you presented vocabulary, when you taught that. And now, next lesson, you want to check if your students remember the words. Yes, you gave them a whole task to learn everything, everything. And now you uh, check what they know, what they remember. Uh, one of my favorite. Uh, because it combines, you know, because it um, contains the word dictation. <laughs> I like that. We all probably will start, like making our students write some kind of dictation. <laughs> but this time it's a running dictation, a bit different. And again, with this activity, make sure that uh, teacher is next door will not come and complain that you are noisy and your students are running and probably you need some help because you cannot control the class. That is what happened to me once. But what's the uh, idea behind that? Uh, your students work in pairs. Somewhere on the wall, or on the table or whatever, uh, in the corridor or at the end of the room or uh, somewhere in secret place you put a list of words or it might be again if these are some concrete nouns some pictures or some definitions and again so students work in pairs student one goes or runs again depends on how uh it correlates with the safety in the classroom. Uh, you, one student runs to the list, looks at the first picture, remembers what the word is, comes back, dictates the word to the second student, to, to his or her partner. Student number two writes the word. Okay. Student one comes back to the list, look at the second picture, tries to remember the word, comes back, dictates, and so on. Then make sure that at some point, your students exchange, change their roles. Right? So the one who was running is sitting and writing. The one who was sitting and writing now is running. Uh, how do I do that? I simply divide the list words into two parts and write this is for student one. This is for student two. And who wins? The team who has all the words correct, not who is only number, not only being number one, being the first, right? But those who have all the words um, written correctly and spelled correctly. So you have your dictation, uh, but they are also engaged. Uh, in the mind, uh, we have Quizlet alive. Uh, why I prefer it more than Kahoot? Because with uh, Kahoot, uh, that is pure guessing to me. Those who want to be the first, they simply uh, choose any picture, any word, uh, uh, just to, to be the first one. And actually, that is. Oh, not thinking, not knowing, is guessing. As for Quizlet Live, uh, it's a bit different. Students work in groups. Uh, typically, yes, three, depending again on how many students you have. And uh, the task is there that um, is probably you might see that students 
imagine that you have 12 new words. These words are divided into by the pilot program divided between students. So each student, so you have three, for example, in group, each of them has four words on their screen. And in the middle, uh, during just while they are playing, everybody sees one and the same uh, picture. For example, everybody sees the picture of a knife, but only one of us has the word knife. So only one of us can press the word knife. So as a team, we need to discuss what the word is and find who has this word. Uh, it can be played both offline and online. And if the team makes three mistakes, if I'm not mistaken, two or three mistakes, there, this, you see this on the scale, they, are, they come back to zero. They need to start from the very beginning. So it's not only about being the first, yes, but being correct, choosing the right word. Uh, bingo, how I play that. You can limit the number of squares. I ask students to look at the words we learned last lesson. And in each box, I ask them to write one word. Again, if you are talking about this knife, scissors, and so forth, here I, for example, I write knife, scissors, tab. Uh, a uh, paper clip, um, something else, something else, or something else. When students have written the words in the box, the game starts. I, for example, I start first. And I say, this is something we use to cut paper. Depending on what you want, you can ask everybody, you can ask students to pronounce the word to see if they know that it is uh, scissors, these are scissors. Everybody who has the word scissors, uh, yeah, cross them out, cross this word out. Uh, or it can be a secret game, right? I say definition. If you remember the word, if you know what the word is, you cross it out. If not, just you know, your problem, right? Um, but here you need to be uh, careful because sometimes students may produce such strange definitions or they sometimes might describe a, just one word, but actually what they are describing is something absolutely different. Right? So I stand for uh, defining the word and guessing the word. Well, first student def defines then one word. Then the next student defines the word he wants. And so on so forth. So we play as a whole class, right? And the one who at some point gets a line says bingo, we check if, oh, uh, if all the words are the mentioned. Uh, uh, or if there are not too many words, it has to be not a line, but the whole field. Yes, so all the boxes have to be closed up. Okay. Uh, same, not similar, but also where the students need to define or describe the words, to explain the words, so half a crossword. So uh, when one student has half of the words and another student has this, another half of the word, words, they uh, um, student uh, B asks, what is number one down? Student A says, that is the subject where you learn some words like blah, 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 blah. Or that is the language spoken in the USA, for example. Right? Um, you can use, uh, I've previously, I used the site which was called Half a Crossword, but now to create this um, activity. However, unfortunately, now it doesn't work. Another one that I found is this one. You can create half crosswords there. So you simply type, type the words and the program divides these words into two uh, parts. 
Um, unscrambling is again yeah we'll look at that later okay it doesn't matter ignore that please <laughs> well uh if you look at if you look here right again one of the vegetables is hidden so any idea what veggie vegetable it is Oh, great. Yes, right, you are. Right. So uh, it can be done. You simply give students these words and they unscramble them. Uh, if you feel that the words might be quite difficult, you leave the first letter and the last letter on their places. You simply scramble the middle. Right. So in this case, it will be um, T will be here, then some letters, 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 and R will be here, right? Uh, you can involve students in creating this task. Thanks to Anna, my colleague Anna, now we kind of know how to do it in quite an easy way. So again, if we are talking about what cucumber, how can you uh scramble or how you can teach your students to make this activity you simply start with, um, from the center from the middle so here is the word letter t and then you uh, you add one letter before uh, one letter behind yeah. one before one behind Oh, the topic is done. Okay. Uh, you can also use uh, the site. The one that I use for this activity is called uh, Worksheets, the teacher, Teacher's Corner. Here again, you simply type the words and the uh, program on the site does everything for you. You can choose either this, uh, the, you want to scramble the whole word or you want not to leave the first and the last letter on their places, just your choice. Um, taboo activity. It can be ready-made. It can be uh, created by your pro or a problem. These cards are taken from this side. Here is it. The Problem here is actually you type a word, for example, snowflake, and these words are chosen by the site. So you cannot choose it just in the words yourself. So that is the problem with this particular site. Probably there are some others where you can choose which words to write. Uh, you can again create the cards using your students. So you divide the words in, uh, uh, between your students, and they need to write to create these taboo cards. And again, it can be played uh, in groups. It can be played in pairs. So it's up to you, your choice. And then it can be played online as well. When students are in working person or in groups, but again, make sure that students hear each other. Yes, they do not and do not cheat. Okay. Um, some other activities, cards definition game. What I mean is that you simply take the cards, put them in a pile. One student takes the card, defines partner tries to guess. If partner guess, uh, guesses, he or she gets the card. Yes. And uh, they take turns, play, and by the end of the activity, see who has more cards. If the partner couldn't guess, the word goes, yes, uh, below this file, yes, on the last place. And um, continue, continue playing or until all the words are defined. 
Uh, back forward is when students uh, work in pairs, oh, sorry, in groups, uh, from, watch, from each group, one of the partners is sitting with their back to the board. You write a word on the board. Teams have to define the word to their partner and who guesses first, yes, gets the point. The issue here is that actually those partners, then yes, they can hear both teams. So the, uh, the idea is yes, he or she can hear everybody. The one who uh, guesses the word first uh, gets the point. Uh, last man standing is when you put students in a circle and uh, you say word first. You say different words from the set. And one says mother, another says father, another says son, daughter, blah, 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 blah. And if the student cannot say the word or the student repeats the word, he sits down. Just you play until only one last student uh, is standing again the problem might be here is that um if uh some just the whole most of the class are already sitting and two or three students are still playing others those who are sitting get bored so at some point you need to feel where to stop that, okay, guys, you are too very clever. You remember a lot of words. Thank you very much. Two winners. Okay. Charts a um, this is the activity. I'll just crocodile way you, uh, show something, and students need to guess. Again, instead of teacher showing something, you ask students to show to their groups or partners. Something that will help you come back to some set of words again and again is the word bag. Uh, you might take a, a box. If it's uh, offline teaching, you can uh, take a box. You can take a bag, whatever. And every time when you learn uh, new words, when you teach students new words, you put them in that bag. And from time to time, you simply come back to the bag and work with the words. Uh, you take them from the back, see what students remember, what students don't remember, and play some games. I mentioned before with those words, which they do not actually remember uh, very well. And now, could you please write the word in the chat box if you remember that, not pluses, of the word. I will not look at, at some spelling, only the word itself. Fantastic. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm, great. Actually, I don't know why you need the word, and I believe you also don't know why you need the word, uh, this particular word, but but you remember that, yes, a very similitude thing, yeah. Fine. Uh, well, some activities can be taken from different books like this. And uh, here I will send it, just, just now we'll send it to the chat box. You will find a certificate. Uh, you download it. And in PDF, there is a field where you type your name and surname. And I will send you in a minute. I'm oh, sorry. And please join us if you want to write something personal. Here is my Instagram. Here is Instagram of our teacher training. Please follow that because there we write about our um, webinars like this or any other events we are planning. And uh, please follow us there. Okay. Actually, that's it from me. Oh, uh, yeah. And um, if you find our webinars, my webinar and Anna's and Diana's webinars useful, 
you know, there is a power of feedback. So we will be happy to hear from you what you liked and what else you would like to learn from us. Thank you for being here. Just a second, the link. Um, just one little second. Okay, ending. Yeah, nice to see you again to you. Prego, if I say it correctly, I just I don't use Italian much these days. So. <laughs> Fine. Well, uh, please check if you can open the certificate. And now I'm giving the floor to Anna, my colleague. Anna, where I? Oh, here is Anna. I'm going to make you a co-host. Just one second. You can start entertaining. You know, <laughs> what is it? 